Hello and welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, on the second episode of the Camero series, I'm going to give you an overview of the plugin and also talk about the preferences and the different file formats we can use. So first of all, let's have a look at the user interface. Once we open an image in Adobe Camera Raw, we will be able to use all the adjustments from these panels here on the right. So we have quite a lot of panels here and in each panel we have a lot of options. The first one is called Basic, second one is Tone Curve, Detail, HSL Grayscale, Split Toning, Lens Corrections, Effects, Camera Calibration, Presets and Snapshots. So these are the panels that we are going to have a close look in the future episodes and we will learn about all the features that you can find in these panels. But let me just give you a quick example. By just changing the temperature we can see how it affects the colors of the image and that's something I can very easily set here in the basic panel. Well I can always return back to the original value by double clicking on this arrow. So once I double click on it, it will go back to the original uh, captured information. And that's a big advantage of working in Adobe Camera Raw because whatever you change to these files, these uh, digital negative files, you will always be able to go back to the default values. So you never have to uh, save uh, different versions. You can just simply store all the changes together with the default values in the same file. You can even save presets and different versions by using snapshots. But I'm, again, I'm going to talk about those in uh, more detail later on in other episodes. So now that we know that we have the adjustments here on the right, let's have a look at the other parts of the whole uh, user interface. We have the histogram here on the top. The histogram can show us the tonal range of our image. So from the left, shadows, mid-tones and highlights and um, that's where we can see how much information we have for each of these tonal ranges and uh, we can also show a clipping warning for the shadows and the highlights so if there's something too close to white or something that doesn't have any color information that will be represented with these red spots on the image and if I increase the exposure these will obviously expand so I can always turn that on and off here in the um, histogram or I can press O to do the same thing and let's have a look at the shadows uh, clipping warning that's uh, keyboard shortcut is U for that and if I reduce the exposure we will be able to uh, see these values um, so those are the parts which will completely turn to black but by reducing blacks we can also see them easily so these are the darkest parts of the uh, photograph so now that we know how to work with the histogram we can also uh, see that there are some very useful information just below the histogram that's the aperture the first value then there's the shutter speed the ISO and then there is the focal length as well and there's more information here below the image we can first of all see the file name and the file extension which in this case it shows that it's a Pentax uh, camera that created this camera raw file and then below that we can see the color profile the bit depth and also the size of this image in uh, pixels and also in megapixels and then at the end the resolution we have an icon to put the camera row into full screen um, but there is also a keyboard shortcut for that if I press F or click on this icon here I can switch back and forth between full screen mode so let me just show you that's how it looks in full screen we have the tools here on the, the top left so first we have the zoom tool then the hand tool which is for navigation then we have the white balance tools and color sample tools and then we have other editing tools here. I'm going to talk about again all of these in more detail in another video. Uh, we can zoom in and out by using the uh, zoom tool or these uh, minus and plus icons here or we can also uh, move around the image by holding down space just like in Photoshop which will uh, switch temporarily to the hand tool. And you can also use command or control minus and plus to zoom in and out and to fit the image to the screen you can press command or control zero. 
there are several ways to uh, finish and save your changes what you whatever you do in camera raw first of all you can click on done uh, let me just make a, a big change on this image i'm going to turn it uh, to black and white and to be able to do that i'm going to choose the hsl grayscale and here click on convert to grayscale so now if i click on done we will be able to see it in bridge that this image will be updated so it's saved with these changes and that little icon on the top right represents the edits that i assigned to this image so now these changes are saved to the camera roll file and if i double click on it again it will automatically uh, come back with these changes if i want to i can turn this off Again, remember, camera raw edits are completely non-destructive, so I can always switch it back to uh, color, and then I can click again on done. But I can also click on open image to open this image into Photoshop. Let's have a look at that. So if I click on open image, we will have the edited image opened up in Photoshop. There's another way of using uh, camera raw adjustments together uh, with other adjustments in Photoshop by using a filter that's only available in Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud, the CC version. So that's the feature called camera raw filter. And if you are interested about that, I'm going to talk about that in more details in the next episode. But let's just go back to uh, Bridge. I'm going to close this image and by double clicking on this image I opened it up again and I just would like to show you that there is another option here on the left the save image option so if I click on this I can even save out different file formats from uh, Adobe Camera Raw we can save a digital negative version a JPEG, TIFF or a Photoshop file version and we have also more options here for naming the file set up where we want to save it and compatibility and jpeg preview and so on and so forth and uh, if you haven't heard about the digital negative format the dng format i would like to talk about that also a little bit more in detail so the lack of a standard format for camera raw files uh, it created an additional work for camera manufacturers because they needed to develop proprietary formats along with the software to process them it also poses a risk for end users because camera raw formats vary from camera to camera, even those produced by the same manufacturer. So it is not uncommon for a camera manufacturer to terminate support for a discontinued raw format. So this means users have no guarantee they will be able to open archived camera raw files in the future. To address these problems, Adobe has defined a new proprietary format for camera raw files the format they called digital negative or DNG uh, and it, it can be used by a wide range of hardware and software developers to provide a much more flexible raw processing and archiving workflow so all that means that if you store your files your camera raw files in DNG format that's a great way of archiving them because Adobe is dedicated to give support for these files so if you archive your uh, raw files in DNG uh, you will always be able to open them together with Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop uh, let me just show you a list of all the cameras that natively can capture DNG files so this is a trend and this is a list that uh, is growing every time um, so all these cameras uh, you can capture your images directly into DNG format uh, you can't see on this list the two biggest names probably in the industry, Canon and Nikon, but hopefully in the future they will also allow uh, to save uh, camera raw files into the DNG format. And then it will become really like a standard for shooting in RAW. Another thing that is good to know is how to access the camera raw preferences that's something you can find under the bridge options if you are a PC user you will find it under the edit menu but on Mac you just click on Adobe Bridge CC and then you can find the camera raw preferences so once you select that you can see we have a uh, quite a lot of options here 
and uh, you probably need to know mainly about the options for uh, the JPEG and TIFF handling because this is something that not every user know that you can actually open JPEG or TIFF files as well into the Adobe Camera Raw editing uh, plugin so if this option is set like this automatically open JPEGs with settings that means whenever I used uh, Camera Raw settings on a JPEG file then that file will be automatically opened into the Camera Raw plugin so like this one exposure JPEG if I double click on it because it had Camera Raw settings it will automatically open here in uh, Camera Raw and that's all I wanted to show you in this episode if you are interested to learn more about Adobe Camera Raw, make sure you join me next time here on Tuts Plus. Thanks a lot for your attention.